Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking all about invisible disabilities. If you're new to my channel, welcome. It's so great to have you here. My name is Devin and I make videos all about mental health and chronic illness. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much. You guys know I love you. If you haven't already, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Smash that like button for me. When you think about a person with a disability, what do you think of? What do you visualize in your head? For a lot of people, they think of things like mobility aids, such as wheelchairs, walkers, or crutches, possibly hearing aids, a walking cane, a service dog, those sorts of things. When most people think about somebody with a disability, they picture somebody who is outwardly visually disabled. But that's not the case for probably the vast majority of people with disabilities. Most people have what are called invisible disabilities. And that is simply an umbrella term for any hidden disability or challenge. These are things that people have to deal with. They are mental and physical conditions and illnesses that people have to deal with that you can't see immediately upon looking at them. It is currently estimated that about 10% of the US population has an invisible disability. It is also estimated that about 90% of people with chronic illnesses have an invisible disability as well. So what are invisible disabilities? What are examples of these things? I mentioned before, it is both physical and mental illnesses and conditions. Some examples of physical invisible disabilities are arthritis, autoimmune diseases, asthma, diabetes, brain injuries, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, there is so much that could be wrong with the body that you outwardly cannot see. And if it is impacting a person's day-to-day -day life, it can be considered an invisible disability. Some mental invisible disabilities include sleep disorders, mood disorders, psychotic disorders, and neurological disorders. All of those things are included under that big umbrella term of invisible disabilities. These are things, again, that disable you, that impact your life, that make you unable to do certain things that a normal able-bodied person would be able to do, but it isn't immediately apparent when they look at you. You can't look at somebody and say, oh, they have a disability because they don't have any outward visual cues. And as somebody who has lived with invisible disabilities for a very long time, I can say that the challenges that people with visible disabilities face can be very different from the challenge that people with invisible disabilities face. And I'm going to explain that a little bit because living with an invisible disability, especially in a society that so much correlates disabilities with wheelchairs or disabilities with hearing aids or disabilities with some form of visual thing that says I have a disability. When your society pushes that so hard, then people with invisible disabilities aren't taken as seriously. I have had doctors look at me and tell me, well, you look fine, so you must be fine. I have had doctors tell me because I am not screaming in pain that my pain does not exist. I've had doctors essentially accuse me of just trying to get drugs when I have a documented autoimmune condition and a list of other things. It's very frustrating. It's almost like you're stuck between the healthy and the sick world. You're not sick enough to be considered disabled. You're not sick enough for these doctors to really help you, but you're not healthy enough to live your life day to day. It can be extremely frustrating when the doctors who are diagnosing you with these chronic painful conditions are also on the flip side telling you that you won't give you any pain medication because you're just seeking drugs or that you look healthy so you must be healthy, that you're not screaming so you must not be in pain. The stigma of disability having to be visual is not only apparent in all of society, it's very much apparent in the medical field as well. And it's really, really frustrating. Switching from issues dealing with medical professionals to people in your personal life, it can be really hard to build and maintain relationships when you have these kinds of invisible disabilities, especially if the other person is not 
extremely understanding because the people around you aren't constantly reminded of what you're going through. My friends used to not be constantly reminded of how much pain I was in. So if I would cancel on them at the last minute, they would get frustrated with me. I have gotten better with communicating with my friends, but that has just taken a lot of time. And a lot of people have weeded themselves out in that time because they either couldn't handle me being sick. I can't go out and party like everybody else does. And that really hurt me in my teenage years. I had this best friend who, after I got sick, really didn't want to hang out with me anymore. And I don't think she attributes it to me being sick at all. She was very much there for me when I was sick, when I was in the hospital. But afterwards, she just kind of disappeared and started hanging out with the friends that could go out and drink and party and do all these things where I was stuck at home because I was sick. And people just start not calling as much because they know that you're sick and you're not going to answer or they know that you can't come. It's just, it's hard and it's isolating. And you really, really find out who wants to be in your life because they have to try. There's a lot of time invested both ways. I will say that I have to invest the time and effort as well. I can't just say, oh, I'm sick, so I'm going to be a terrible friend. But it's really important for the people in my life to be very, very understanding that I am sick and I am sick every day. And I may look healthy and I may seem fine. I may seem outwardly happy, but that doesn't mean that I'm not currently in pain, that I'm not currently feeling like garbage and just trying to make the best of it. So it's very, very hard to maintain these relationships when people aren't understanding. It's very easy for people to just stop talking to you. Another thing that I have really noticed over the years is that as time goes on, the people in your life start losing the sympathy, the empathy, and the patience that they once had for you. When I first got diagnosed, everybody came around me and was super supportive. But like I mentioned earlier, not long after that, my friend just kind of went away. And that's what happens. People get into this mindset of, you were sick, you're better now. But it's instead, I was sick and now I will be sick for the rest of my life. And I've actually had those conversations with friends where they get frustrated or upset with me and they'll be like, well, you're always sick. Yes, that's the point. I'm always sick. And luckily the people that I have been able to keep in my life, if they do get to that point, then snap out of it and are like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, you're right. But not everybody has that. A lot of people just want you to suck it up and act like you're fine so that way the rest of their lives can go on. And it's not that easy. You can't just suck up a disability and make it go away. That's not how it works. The last really big challenge that I have had to deal with that people with invisible disabilities have to deal with is people accusing you of faking it. And this can be people you know, family members, friends, coworkers, or complete strangers. For a very long time, I was terrified to get a tag, a parking uh, disability tag, because I was scared that somebody was gonna tell me I was faking it. And I still don't have one because, well, now we're in a pandemic and I'm not driving anywhere. But as somebody with a disability who could have genuinely used one of those at many, many points in my life, just so that way I wouldn't have to walk as far, exert as much energy, be in as much pain. I just can't imagine like how much easier my life could have been if I actually felt comfortable reaching out and trying to get the services for disabled people. But I'm scared of getting told that I'm faking it. And you see it online a lot, people like slamming people for parking in the disabled spots when they're not actually disabled. And yes, sometimes teenagers will use their grandparents' tags or whatever it is, but you don't know. And that just comes again from the stigma that if someone's disabled, you can see it. And if you can't see it, then they must be faking it. And it's very, very frustrating because you almost feel like you have to prove how sick you are to people. And that's not my job. I shouldn't have to prove anything to people. I shouldn't have to show anybody a list of my diagnoses just to prove to them that I have a disability. I should literally just be able to say, hey, I have this. And you say, okay, cool. Is there any accommodations you need? That simple. It's really that simple. But often people like to stereotype 
and they stereotype disabled people and it's almost like they feel that they're doing this great good for the disabled community because they called out somebody who was faking it. And that's not what it is because quite possibly that person wasn't faking it. They were in a shit ton of pain and you just made their day so, so much worse. I think that people need to open up their minds to all sorts of people in all of these communities and not just think that, oh, you're disabled, so you have to have a wheelchair. Those are very different things. And yes, there are many disabled people with wheelchairs, but just because you don't have a wheelchair doesn't mean you're disabled. It doesn't work both ways. <laughs> you know what I mean? A person in a wheelchair can be disabled, but just because a person is disabled doesn't mean they have a wheelchair. So that really wraps up everything that I wanted to tell you guys about invisible disabilities and the unique challenges that people with invisible disabilities have to face. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you smash the like button, click subscribe, ring the notification bell for me. If you have any questions about anything I've said today or any content that you would like to see in the future, please make sure that you leave it down below in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you are able to stay safe and stay sane in this crazy time, and I'll see you next time.